PC leader Jamie Bailey pulled out the big toys today to announce part of his infrastructure plan. Bailey says his government would twin four sections of provincial highways in the next seven years at a total cost of $729 million. The bill would be cost shared with Ottawa and would not involve tolls. If this plan sounds familiar, that's because the Liberals announced the same plan last week. But Bailey said his party's plan is based entirely on the study performed by consulting firm CBCL. Meanwhile, the NDP promised today to reverse one of the most contentious decisions made by the previous Liberal government. Leader Gary Burrell says his party would re-establish the $23 million a year tax credit with an extra $10 million in the first year. Burrell says the extra funding this year would help stabilize an industry that was, quote, decimated by the Liberals in the 2015 budget. Speaking of the Liberals, today Stephen McNeil detailed his party's plan for more mental health support. The four-year, $37 million plan includes hiring 86 more clinicians, expanded support in schools and communities, and putting mental health support in all collaborative health clinics. Public libraries across Nova Scotia want to make stable library funding an election issue. Library grants from the province have only increased just over 1% over the past seven years. Part of the problem is funding is partly based on the per capita basis, rather. Librarians say without changes, there could be branch closures and even more program cuts. We're having difficulty coping. Uh, we, our collections are down 11.85% compared to five years ago and our staffing, and this is why we're all feeling a little uh, burnt out, our staffing is down 11.65% which means 4.22 full-time equivalents. And we only have about 36 people full-time on staff, you know, full-time staff. And that's for five branches. Now, libraries across the province are asking supporters to talk to candidates about this. In Pictou and Antigonish counties, they're handing out door hangers, so candidates will see a pro-library message as a canvas for votes. Now, we asked each of the major parties where they stand on funding libraries. Each of them say they have plans to keep libraries open. To find out what they said, head to our website, cbc.ca slash ns. Week one of the election campaign is just about over and it's already full of big talk and promises. But how does all of this sit with you? Colleen Jones has been out talking to people from East Chesuncook to Halifax to check the pulse. Okay, Colleen, so what are people saying? Checking the pulse, Amy, and, and people are kind of two things. First off, there was a lot of cynicism from the people that I was talking to about all the promises that are always made come election time and what's actually delivered. And then the other kind of overwhelming feeling I got from people was that there's sort of a bit of indifference about this election. Let's begin in rural Nova Scotia in West Chesuncook. 88-year-old Douglas LaPierre is at Jonesy Seafood Shack picking up his fish. He's seen a lot of elections in his years. And they're all the same. They all tell you all kinds of stories and it's not true. They'll promise you stuff and don't deliver or something? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. His issues, senior care, health care and better roads, but his expectations of getting those fixed? We pay more taxes for and we don't get anything for them. Down the road a bit, Burton Rhino and Jerry Wolf stay on top of the election talk. Oh, McNeil got it figured out, the, the medical system field. Has he? Figured yeah. out, yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. it figured out, all right. <laughs> the issues as they see them? No doctors. The roads are a mess, the schools are a mess, we're in a problem here. We're the Mexico of Canada because it, the wages in Nova Scotia are, are amongst the lowest. So how does the province move on? Meet lobster fisherman David Swain from Three Fathom Harbour. Are the politicians uh, saying what you want to hear yet? Oh, not yet. No, I don't believe them anyway. <laughs> you know what they're like. <laughs> But I don't know, they promised this and promised that, and you know what I mean? Nothing happens? <laughs> Nothing happens. Meanwhile, in Halifax, employment and the environment are big issues for millennials like Jordan Holmes. Like, there's so much that you can do for, um, like, tax credits for hiring new graduates. You're not hearing any of that, though? <laughs> no, and um, I guess on a federal level, there's a bit of an initiative to it with, like, the different seeds programs, but provincially, they're kind of falling back on federal stuff. Sobaz Benjamin is a musician who says he's a glass-half-full kind of guy. 
he doesn't buy into election promises. People need to be inspired, you know what I mean? I think, and inspired in a way not where you're just telling people what you think they want to hear because, again, as an electorate, I think we've kind of passed that kind of notions of sort of, you know, vote for me and I'll set you free kind of deal. I think what people want to hear really is the realities of, of, of uh, and how are you going to deal with the realities of everyday life. Um, have I heard that much from politicians? Not really. So, best Benjamin, wise words, aren't they? Are we hearing the realities of what we need in everyday life here in Nova Scotia? That's what a lot of the people I talk to are hoping the politicians, rather than going around in circles, start telling the people uh, real truth. Amy and Tom. All right, I'll take that, Colleen. Thanks, Colleen Jones, live in Halifax for us tonight.